Hi guys, with the holiday time upon us, my son Austin's going to help us out. Say hi to everyone. Hi. We're going to go through some basic, some structural terms and some learning. So this might be something you can do with your kids at home or even with your nephews, especially this time of year, there's always looking for entertainment. I'll just be going through some practical engineering examples and just teaching him some of the stuff that I go through from day to day. Anyway, let's get into it and hope that it's not a mistake. <laughs> So today we're going to go through some of the basic actions that we have to deal with from day to day and that you know they're in a series of things. So we've really got axial forces, we've got bending forces and we also have shear forces. Today we're just going to go through two of the primary actions which is axial and bending. We'll start off with axial forces. Now axial forces come in two categories. We either have tension forces or compression forces. So depending on what elements we have, different elements can handle different forces differently. So if we make our tower out of individual blocks and we press down on it, we can see that they behave really well under compression. Do you want to try? See if you can push it down. Does it work? And we've got a string, right? And strings are really good in tension. So we try and pull it, it doesn't work. But when I squeeze it up like we did the other one, it turns into a little ball. Yeah, so it's really good in tension, but now try and squash it. So if I hold the bottom, can you lift it up off Daddy's hand? Did it work? No. How about we try the blocks? I'll hold the bottom block and see if you can lift them up. Can you lift them up? So they're not good at tension, right? They can only provide compression forces. Now we put them back. We can see we push it and they're still in compression. So this is where we've got the tension and compression forces. These are the primary actions that I need to deal with day to day. The other primary action we have is bending forces. The bending forces, as the name suggests, it makes a bending force on our object. And this is a combination of both tension and compression. So one side's in tension, one side's in compression, as you can see here. The top side would be in compression as it's separating apart. You see how it's separating apart, Austin? So that side's in tension. But now what I've done is applied a bit of tape on one side so we can resist the tension forces. If we try and bend it the other way, we can see it doesn't bend at all because of the tension string on that side. If we tried to put these blocks on top, is this gonna work? What's going to happen? It just collapses, right? So if we remember which way our object goes, so if we put it up one way, what do you think is going to happen now? Will this one stand up? How come? It doesn't stand up because the tension side's on the wrong side, right? So now if we put the tension side on the bottom side, because the tension side's where it was, we can see now just with some blocks and a little bit of tape, we're able to stand the blocks up, right? Also, we can see this even further. When we get a cantilever going out, we've got the tape on one side, the tape across, we can see it bends down. Because clearly the tension force is on the top side now, yeah? So I've made a pit of blocks where we've got the tape on the bottom and the tape on the top. So you can see it bends, it's very bending. But if we place this right, we're able to see that we can put the tension force on, we can make a cantilever. Now, what we can also do, we can see what happens is there's a bit of tension going beyond this support because the moment goes down, up and down because of the hogging moment. So if we start to move this support back, we can start to see it moving. Look, you can see it moving, look. I'll keep moving it and it disconnects before we get to the end. This is where we get that inflection point. So when we've got the tension spot, we've got to see where we put the reinforcement. The reinforcement needs to go past the support. As we can see here, when we move the support back, okay, tension is currently only onto the yellow block. But if we move it back, back, look, we can see it going now. We can see it moving, moving. And you can see that the support needs to be before we get to the end of that tension location because the tension reinforcement is there. But look, if we, can, we keep moving this way a little bit, little bit. I think when I get past the green block, because that's where the tension on the bottom stops, I don't think it's going to work anymore. It doesn't work. It sort of works, but not really. You can see it's moved down. Yeah? So by putting the tension on the right side, we can make our little blocks that are just loose better support themselves with only a little bit of sticky tape. So when designing a building, another consideration he needs to do, he needs to make sure he's got enough sides to support. So let's work out how many sides to support. And all we need is this simple little box. So let's stand up this box. As you can see here, it's hollow. See the camera on the other side. But 
with the hollowness, do you think it will stand up or do you think we can push it over? I think we can push it over. How come? You want to try? Oh, it falls down. But now, let's close up the back side. So we'll spin it around. We'll close up one side. Look, now we have three sides of support. So we've got top and bottom, left and right, and on the back as well. So now, do you reckon we can push the box over? Is it a lot stronger now, isn't it? Because of the three sides support, it's now stable. Because when we tried to push it, we have forces that spin around, so it's yeah, balancing and, it. And it, because this is um, lining up here, because the sticky tape is sticky. But it's, yeah, but it's correct, because it allows it to go three sides, so when it tries to rotate, it's able to balance itself out. So we don't need four sides of support when you design a building, we need at least three sides of support to keep it stable. Okay, now let's get to the exciting part, which you get to do. We're gonna build a bridge from what we've learnt today. Yeah? So, so can we help with get the bits of bridge? Mm -hmm. This is gonna be modeled similar over what the Westgate bridge is. We've already built some of it. As you can see here, a shape similar to the Westgate bridge, if you've seen that bridge before. Um, we've already got the stiffness. So look, it's still already solid on two sides, isn't it? So we can't, ro we can't rotate it because we're already stuck to two sides. And we've just got a stiffen plate in the middle. So this one's quite easy. So we've got, our, we've got four sides to support now, right? So we learned that we need to have three. All we do, like the monster trucks jump on, like this one up, then jump. <laughs> then it's upside down, it's not meant to be that way. This is the top of the bridge. So for this example, we, we'll just put the deck on top, right? So we'll finish it off. Oh, Daddy, um, the monster trucks will go well. We'll have to work out what we need to do for the columns to make sure they're stable, yeah? Does it push over? It doesn't push over as easy. So what is it? What are we missing? The stiffener. <laughs> We're missing the stiffener plate. We need to make some stiffener plates. So we've got wow, four columns, big columns. Now let's see if we can make the bridge down. How many columns do you think we're going to need to make the bridge stand up? Four. Four? Do you want to try to see if we can make it with two? Let's try. We'll put the two big ones. Did it work? Yes. So when we set up our four columns, what do you think is going to happen when we put it on an angle? It falls over. Way do we need to put the tension? So which way did the did the columns fall? This side is on the tension side, right? So if we stand them back up, we put a little bit of sticky tape on that side. Works. All we need is a little bit of sticky tape to stop it from lifting off, so we make it stable. Because on the other side, it's equal in compression, right? I think um you have to get the sticky tape like this then <laughs> to catch the wind. So let's see. Are these are these columns good in compression or tension? Tension. You think? So I can lift it off. No good at tension, right? But if I press them down, they support. And as we saw, when they fell over, they were no good in tension. So if we can help support the tension force by tying them down on the side that they're going to fall over on, they should be able to stand up. We just put little bits of tension support on one side. We'll see what happens. You reckon it'll work? And we can keep them standing up so they don't fall over when you make it into a ram? Yeah. If the monster rocks in, it won't still bend it. It won't. So you said he needs to consider which side the tension forces are going to be on to so make sure that our, our structure is stable. Did it work? So look, with a little bit of engineering, uh, let's grab them back. And so they. Yeah. This is the winner, I think. This is going to yeah. Okay, let's come back. So with a little bit of engineering, we can make it stand up because it wasn't working before, was it? Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll... 
I'm recording when you do all the monster trucks. Oh, oh, oh. Awesome. <laughs> Flash that. We won't crash it, we're just going to finish up. So guys, there's a bit of different one from what we normally do. It's it the holiday period, obviously around your kids a lot more and even sons and nephews. So hopefully there's some things you can do to help your kids get into engineering. And if you are interested in engineering and how it can change the world, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have made it to this point, you did like it, so hit the like button, everyone thumbs up. Make sure everyone can hit that like button for that YouTube algorithm. And to get all updates, you need to ding the bell. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Hello. Here's to 2021, bye. Say bye.